Ariel Hawani in Las Vegas alongside Montreal's own John McDessie, who faces Donald Cerrone this Saturday at UFC 187 live on pay-per-view. John, I feel like I just saw you not that long ago in Montreal after your win. When they called you about this opportunity, did you even think twice or was it a no-brainer? I mean, uh, not really. You know, at first, at first I was hesitant because of I just finished the fight. I didn't really even enjoy my last f a fight. Uh, you know, didn't really settle in mentally, physically. I spoke to my nutrition guy. He told me, you're good. For me, it was always, for me, it's always about the weight cut. You know, I want to be healthy. My goal is to be healthy. A lot of fighters cut weight wrong and they don't perform. So, so my goal is to be healthy and be able to be 100% for fight night so I can perform and give the fans excitement. Without a doubt, this is the biggest fight of your career, right? Would you agree with that? 100%, yeah. Would you say that because you've had just essentially like a month, less than a month to prepare, that maybe that's a good thing because you can't overthink it. There's no time to sit around and overthink it. I know the mental side of the game has been an issue that you've been dealing with and getting the better of as of late, but because you can't overthink it, maybe that's a good thing. Do you agree? I mean, I, I just think, uh, you know, when I turn professional and, and in MMA, I find they make things bigger than when they are. You know, when I was young, growing up, I had trainers always told me, you know, your job as a fighter, you fight, you always should be ready. You know, as, as a professional fighter, you know, all my life I grew up in that mentality where, you know, my trainers, my mentors always taught me, you know, you, got, you train hard and you're ready for anybody. You know, I, I would fight every two weeks. I would go to a competition. You know what I mean? And I, I'm, I'm looking at it like it's another fight. I'm not making it too, too big, you know what I mean? And uh, I've been training consistently for the past, you know, for, for it's been 10 years I've been waiting for an opportunity like this. And off the top of my head, I, I may be wrong, correct me if I am, is this your first time fighting in Vegas for the UFC in your pro MMA career? That's amazing. What's it like so far? I, you know what, it's funny, I, I dreamed about this for a long time. I, uh, I, I've been to Vegas already. I visualize myself fighting in Vegas eventually, you know, it is inevitable. And uh, I'm just happy to be a part of history. Such a big card as well. There are a lot of big names. He is streaking. A lot of people think that if he wins, he'll get a title shot. What happens if you win? Do you get a title shot? You know what? Honestly, man, I'm, I'm living day by day. I'm not focusing too much on the title. Right now, it's, I'm focusing on my opponent. And my goal is to get, go out there and do what I know I'm capable of doing. So he has looked so good as of late. Do you have a theory as to why? You know, before it used to be like he'd get to these big fights and then he would crumble and have to take a step back and then win four in a row and then start over again. Why do you think he's been able to look so good as of late? I mean, that's the question you have to ask him. I mean, uh, you know. Studied him? Yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, we trained with each other a couple of years back. I went to New Mexico. He came down to Montreal. I mean, he know, I know his style. He knows my style. You know what I mean? And, and, and at the end of the day, it, it's, it's all mental. Fighting is mental. It's, it's who's, who wants it more and who's more hungrier, you know? And, and, and skills do pay the bills. And, and so, you know, we'll see who's going to be the better man. So did that history make you more confident and more eager to take this fight? As opposed to if you didn't train with him in the past, maybe you would have been a little more hesitant to take the fight? You know, I, to be honest with you, f for me, it's not even about, I don't focus on my opponents, okay. I focus on myself. You know, I train with, I train in, in Montreal and try to start training with Joyce St. Pierre, training with Roy McDonald. I, I've been working with a lot of good guys in the gym and that, my confidence comes from my preparation. That's where my confidence comes. And I see how other fighters train. So I know I train harder than most fighters in, in, in the UFC and the proof is in the pudding. My last opponent was a top competitor, K1 fighter, twice as my size, much bigger guy, you know, and I beat him at his own game. So if Donald Swan is going to engage with me, you know, it's going to be a rough night. You know what I mean? So we'll see. Do you think there's any chance he takes you down or at least tries to take you down? No, I truly believe I turn every striker into a wrestler. You know, everybody wants to stand with me. And then next thing you know, they're going to try to take me down. But I've been working with re uh, Olympic national wrestlers. I've been working with uh, specifically on jiu-jitsu guys. I mean, a lot of guys never saw my game, uh, you know, but... For me, it's all about giving the fans excitement. You know, no, nobody wants to see a, a jiu-jitsu match. This is, this is a combat sport. This is a full contact sport, and I love contact. You know, you were on my show recently, and you were very candid about the past year with Fear of the Fighter and whatnot. I'm just wondering, what was the, uh, the feedback that you received from that interview and what you said? Has it quieted down? Are people reaching out and thanking you for being honest, or is the heat still there? And unfortunately, I mean, there's always going to be criticism. People are always going to, you know, put me in the mix. But like, you know, like I said, you know what I mean? I was never a part of the business. It's unfortunate what, what happened, you know, but uh, it's one of those things where it, it was always out of my control. You know what I mean? All I know is that the lawyers are taking care of it. And, and I, I tried my hardest to make sure that 
everybody is, is going to be taken care of and I try as much as I can to to do something you know to contribute because at the end of the day I am a fighter and we all struggle you know I know what it is you know it's a, very, it's a tough business the hardest thing is the business aspect of the game you know and uh, I, just, I just you know I wish everyone the best and you know and uh, I, I'm, I know right now that there is new administration there's new owners and feeder fighters there's a new uh, new owner so we'll see what happens considering all of that are you uh, happy to see the Reebok deal come in to deal with that stuff. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the pros about having a, a professional brand is that it's professional. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, we are professional people. We need to be surrounded by professionalism. You know, what I mean, there's a lot of people in this game that are not professional. So this is the hard part. You know, because I'm a professional. You know, and I want to be surrounded by a professional team and professional people. So we'll see what happens. You know, what I mean, people are are not happy with the numbers, but. I mean, right now, I never benefit anything from Reebok. I mean, there's no, I ain't benefit anything. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see if, if it's a good thing for the fighters. We'll see. All right. Well, kudos to you for taking this fight on short notice. And best of luck to you. Thank you for the time. Thank you for you. Thank you.